analysis, absolutely everything on hour one and hour four charts and the D1 charts. Okay? Because I want to get, you know, are we here to gamble? No. no. Right? Like I say to people, if you want to gamble, if you're just going to stick in, uh, oh, I hope for the best to buy, okay? You're better off going to the casino. Okay, play roulette or poker, whatever it is. Okay, because that's not what I do. I'm here, okay, fundamentally to understand in terms of learn the strategies, learn the skills that can implement, you know, so I know what's going to happen long term, okay? Of course, no trade is ever 100% risk free, okay? But as long as we have strategies behind it, that's the most important thing. And if you're in this room right now and you're saying, I'm just going to give it a go, okay? I'll just take a few signals and see how it is. You're not going to be successful long term. Understand that this forex industry, okay, this is has the ability. I mean, I've seen young forex traders. This has the ability to pay you five figures uh, forex alone on a monthly basis. You know, I've seen young kids who have dropped out of university took it seriously, okay, for the first year or two, and now they can be making ten, twenty thousand a month, okay. So the most important thing, like if you're looking at this chart and you're thinking, oh my God, you have to do all that. Understand, what's that saying? I always say it wrong. Failure to plan, planning, planning, planning to fail. fail. There you go. Okay, if you're not prepared to plan, just take, the, just take signals, that's fine, but you're never gonna be anything long-term, okay? So pre-planning is so, 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 so important, okay? All under, uh, under yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So, um, what do I do next then? So, if I see it's hovering along this bottom line here, okay, that's showing me that it's a really, really strong support line. If I can just see one, like normally, if you see like this, okay, you're on a D1 chart, okay, you can just see this going on, um, that's fine. But if I zoom in on that section, okay, and I zoom in, to maybe the H1 or you know even the M15, along that particular line where it's just done this, I'm gonna see multiple times it's hitting this line. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's showing me, it's trying to bounce, it's trying to get down, it just doesn't wanna get down. At some point it's gonna come back up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you wanna see something called consol it's con consolidating in that area, okay? Retesting all the time, retesting, retesting, retesting. Yeah? Okay. So how do I use a harmonic scanner? So again, I just draw my support resistance lines. Let me show you this. Now I've put a major, just before I came on stage, I've put a major red line here. This major red line. So that is representing my support. Okay? Why am I doing that? So if I just zoom out a little bit, okay. I can see that, I'll get my little eclipse, I can see it's touched this line previously here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. If I zoom in slightly, I can see that even the wicks have come down very close. Okay? You know, it's a bit, let me just zoom in a bit because I, I know that's a bit far for people at the back to see that. If you come to the front. Yeah? <laughs> So I can see that even the wicks, okay, it's kind of broken that line, there's a wick here, it broke that line, but it's not, it's not dropping, okay? Um, and even here, you see the red where it dropped, mm. and then it wanted to go back up. Mm. Red dropped again, it wanted to go back up, okay? So this, I kind of put that point as my kind of, maybe my support line, okay? And then what I've done is, along the way, where I can see, you see the points of return, where it's, it's touched the line and it's reversed, okay? So, if I go now to the, the top, my major, major, major support uh, resistant line, I can see that my major resistant line, it's probably this line up here. So, if I get this, if I, if I click on this button on the side, okay, because people say, how do you draw the lines, right? If you click on this, it's going to open up several different ones. So, you've got trend line, uh, horizontal ray, you can do arrows. So, I just click on <coughs> horizontal line. Okay, so I'm just going to put a line like that. Okay, I don't normally do it to the wick. I like to just do it to the end of the body. So what I mean by that is when I have a candlestick, when I have a candlestick that looks like that, 
normally what you find is sometimes a harmonic scanner, they will say, oh yeah, TP is here, <coughs> right? So they'll say, this is TP, because they're doing it to the end of the candlestick, okay? But I like to be certain, I like to see where there's multiple times it's touched, okay? And as a safeguard, because your body is kind of like the average, if it's just a wick, it means it's probably just shut off and come back down, right? So I like to just kind of always base my lines on the end of the end of the body, okay? So if again I look at that, so that is kind of my major resistor line, and then I've got a major support line, okay? So I know it's going to just hover in that section, okay? Right now, where is it? Is it near my major resistor or support line? Support line. Support, support line. Okay. <coughs> Is it hovering in the middle? Is it right near the bottom? Near the bottom. So what is that showing us? Strong by. It's trying to go up. It's going to try and go up. And it's already, <coughs> look, we can even, we even know it is because look, it's a, it's a green bar here that's forming. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, if I go back to the harmonic scanning now. <coughs> you guys read the lines out to me. Where's, where's the tree? <coughs> Around what the number? 109280. Yeah, 280 and 109635. Yep. Okay, now that entry point here, that should, I mean, obviously we're here right now, so we're around 1098. Obviously the market's closed, okay, so it's obviously not open. But if you want for Monday, if you want to check this again, if you've already done your pre planning, you can literally open up your chart and say, oh, it's still there, perfect to take. Okay, you don't have to do all the analysis again. And the good thing about trading with you is it saves all your charts, it saves all your lines. Okay? Um, so even if the scan disappears, you've got it saved on the trade you use. Okay? So here, I can see that here's my entry line. Where's my take profit one? 1.10111. 1 okay? So, 109635. So I've put mine, um, so 65 is obviously a bit higher, so it's about here. But I put my support line because I know that it's, it's bounced near that particular line. So I'm happy to leave it there. I'm happy to you know, notice that when it comes down. Even if it comes up down now, okay, even if it wants to sell a little bit, I'm kind of confident that long term it's going to be a buy. Mm -hmm. So am I going to worry the short term if I'm in, in a down draw? Mm -hmm. No, because I'm, I'm, I know that at some point it's going to just want to shoot back up. Mm -hmm. okay? So I'm confident about that. So take profit one was again, I think 1.10 was it? <coughs> One zero one one one. Okay. Okay. One zero one one one. So I've also put one zero. I put one six. It's close enough, right? But why have I put that line there? Okay. So now, if I zoom in, let me go down to the one hour chart, and I'll stretch it out. Okay. So. I always look at what's previously happened to. So take so um, the harmonic scanner is saying it's 1.10111, right? But I like to question why is it there? Why has the harmonic scanner done that? Okay, the harmonic scanner is doing patterns and it's it's basically doing what's ever ha uh, previously happened before. So it's noticing patterns based on the past. Okay, and this is how we can get really accurate as well. And if we want to move our take profit lines, we can. So what I do is. Can you see here, when it came up here, it kind of bounced in this area and it came back down. Mm. That's why I've got an eclipse there, okay? And you see here again, it was came down to this area, where did it bounce up from? Mm. Yeah. It bounced up there, and then why did it come back down? So what's the likelihood? If it does retest that area, I know at some point it might touch this line, and it might want to have a little reversal, or it might just break through, depending on the news and how strong it is, okay? So I like to safeguard myself. Also, previously, normally what happens is, I'll show you one here. Okay, so let's say this is going to be an uphill trend, okay? But previously it's come down, okay? So, um, okay, something like that. Okay, so that's where we are right now, okay? So you've got my support line here, okay? And I know it's acted as resistance here. Okay, it's acted as resistance here. Okay, so the likelihood is this will touch this line. Yeah, mm -hmm. but if it breaks that line, because we know this is going to be an overall buy, so at some point it's going to be breaking these small 
resistant lines, okay? But here, where it's acted as resistance, it's acted as support here. Yep. Because this was first coming down, now it's going to come back up, okay? So, here it's acted as resistance. So the likelihood is, if this breaks up, it might bounce here, and it might go back up. Mm. If it comes down, now this area is going to act as, where it's acted as resistance, this is now going to act as support. Yeah. Okay? And again, you know, that line's there. So here, let's say there's a wick that's touched that line, right? So it's acting as support here, resistance here. It's going to act as support here, go back up, resistance, resistance, resistance. So now even if it goes above that line and it's hovering here, it's going to act as support here. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I look for. Um, so I notice, where has it previously touched? Where are my major lines previously? That's why I draw lines everywhere. Okay? I can say, oh, okay, there's a line there, there's a line there. Right, so if I go back to the chart now. I'm just trying to root something. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone. Hi guys. <laughs> 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 more important, why you not on? <laughs> they should be here though, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm missing it. It's harder to like just watch it from like Zoom and, and try and understand what I'm doing there. Um, okay, so now back here, you see that's why this here, that's kind of acting as my resistance. But I put these eclipses here because it's acting as my support there. So again, that's a really strong indicator that it will it will touch that particular line. Okay. So if it reaches this line, then where do I think next? Oh look, it's acting as support here. Okay. Oh, it's acted as resistance here, it's acted as resistance here. So then I think, okay, so it will probably touch that line. Then next, it might touch that line. But that, not, might, that might not be take profit too on my scanner. But that's for me to know. So then I can notice where the pullback is going to be. Make sense? Okay. Do you know what pullback is? Yeah. Yeah, some of you do. So pullback is just basically, real quick. If a, if a chart's going up, okay, okay, they, they explain this really well in the IML Academy in terms of trend lines and stuff. But we notice, right, this is an uphill trend, okay? So when you see this, all right, and you know overall it's going to go up, okay, don't enter here. Always enter where it's pulled back down. So this would be the spot to enter. Okay? And when people see this going up, right, they go, oh my god, oh my god, this is an uphill trend. And then they try and get in at this end, okay? So it's called like a high high. You want to get in at a high low, okay? So we wait for the pullback to come down. And say, so don't worry, well, you know what? If it carries on going up, at some point there will be a pullback. If we know this is a D1 chart, this is only going to take days. You don't need to worry, okay? But people get too eager sometimes, okay? And they try and enter here. So what happens? They're in a drawdown, mm -hmm. right? So we say just be patient, wait, let it come back down, enter here. Because now, when you go back up, here you're just at even again. At least here, when you enter there, you're still in profit. Okay, mm -hmm. so even if there is a pullback now, you're still in profit. Mm -hmm. Goes up, okay? So always enter something called HL, high lows. Okay, not the, these are here, these are high highs. Highs. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Good. So, <laughs> wait, I'm gonna now, if it was up here, I wouldn't enter. Okay? I'd be like, okay, there's gonna be at some point there's gonna be a pullback. So wait, so now it's come down here. The minute I start seeing a nice buy bar, okay, it might be like, uh, I might be on a 15 minute chart or like an hourly <coughs> chart, okay? And I can see a nice kind of flurry of buy. So even now we can see that it's starting to buy. That's the perfect time to enter the market. Okay, so take profit two. Where's take profit two? So you need to see what a couple of five bars before you buy something. Or Just one. as confirmation. <coughs> so, for example, just where it is right now. Okay, it's we know it's come down. Okay, it's near our support line. Okay, and let's say this is the H one, for example. Okay. And I can see it's it's kind of it's it's bouncing on that line a little bit, and it's just it's trying to break through. Okay, if I now zoom in to the M15, okay, I zoom in on that area, okay, zoom in right. What I'm going to see is hopefully support. Like I said, it's going to bounce on that line. 
okay? But what I want to see in those 15 minutes, okay, the next couple of bars, if it's red, green, red, green, red, green, it's just consolidating, okay? What I want to see is, I want the candles all to be green. I want to see a nice vibe. So they might have a candle like that, green. The, ne the next candle might also be green. There might be another candle here, also be green. There might be a tiny little red here, I'm not worried about it. But then the next candle here might also be green. So I've got about four or five <coughs> candles which are showing me that it's going in a full direction. If I now see another candle that's red here, I'm like, okay, it's still consolidating. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Can you repeat that, sorry? So these are gonna be hopefully my green ones. Right, so these are gonna be my green candles. Okay, that might be a slightly little, that might be a slightly little red one. <coughs> this is gonna be another green one. Okay, if, I, if there's a mixture of red and green, red and green, it just means it's consolidating. Okay, wait, again, you have to be patient with the market. The market's not gonna move when you tell it to move, okay? <laughs> You're just gonna be like, okay, fine, just chill, you know, go, go, go do something else, check the chart again in the next hour or two. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of those consistent green colors that you're looking at, are you picking the first two or the five? No, I want, I want to see four or five at least. On a 15 minute chart? On a 15 minute chart. Oh, if you use the hour, yeah, if you need the support line here, it's good to just get in anyway, because you know, so if you haven't got time, it's just good to get in when it's right, like you can see it, it's pulled back, even if it's pulled back here, I see it on the, on the support line, I'll just get in anyway, because I know that that's going to go up. But if, it's, if, it, if I want to just make sure it's going to be a long-term buy, okay, just for peace of mind, I want to see, okay, it's doing a nice, it's, it, it's now picking up, okay? So I'll show you on the chart, so you should be able to do it on here. So here, we're on the hour one chart for the Australian New Zealand dollar. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> nice close up on my face. <laughs> okay, can you see if I zoom in on this section? Right? Mm. We can start to see it's picking up. Yeah. Right, I'm on the hour one chart. Mm -hmm. If I now go to the hour 15 chart. Oh yeah. Can yeah. you see that? Yeah. 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 Start to pick. Right? So here, so along, so it started to bounce down, okay, and it was going up, and it's still bouncing. That shows me that area is still consolidating a little bit. But now, okay, so we've got green, green, red, green, 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 red, red, green, green, green. Okay, more greens now, picking up. So that's kind of proving to me. If now I do have a flurry of red, okay, just means it's still consolidating. Don't need to worry, we'll probably come back down to this line. Okay, if it's down at that line, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna just buy it. I'm like, okay, this is a good, perfect point to get in, okay? But I know that all this section right now is buy section. So then all I do is, I've just gotta wait it out. I've gotta just literally wait it out, okay? And so I might check uh, the Forex news, so something called Forex Factory. Mm -hmm. Have we all checked this? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so Forex Factory, or if you use my FX book, okay? Um, you can use FX Street, but I usually like Forex Factory, my FX book. I know some people use investing.com as well. Um, but on the chart, if you go to the top here, where it says calendar, okay? So can you see that there, where it says calendar? Yeah. Okay, if I click on calendar, it's gonna, it's gonna give me uh, so much information for what's gonna come forward, okay? So I can see uh, on Monday, Right, so the market obviously opens on Sunday at uh, 10 o'clock UK time. That's why there's a little bit of news for Sunday. Otherwise, it's normally nothing on Saturday, mm. Sunday. But from Monday, what's the major news? GBP, mm. okay? So if I'm trading GBP, I know that somewhere around 9.30 a.m., you know, I just gotta be a bit careful. If I am trading, um, you know, and I've put in a buy somewhere, just be careful because depending on what the forecast says, Oh, this is old news, okay, 4th of December. Um, and let me just go to the current news. So let's say 10th of December. Okay, um, more. Oh. Right, so Monday is quite quiet, actually. Mm. Not much going on. So these yellow flags here, that's kind of the impact, the impact that it's gonna have on the market, okay? If it's yellow, it's gonna be really minor. 
Uh, orange makes a bit of, might make a bit of an impact, but if I see red flags, okay, then I know that it's going to be, it might cause things to jump, okay. Um, so, Monday we're quite good. So, if you want to enter that trade on Monday, you know that nothing's going to clash with it. Mm. It's, it's just down to the strategies and technicals, okay. Um, Tuesday, yeah, we've got GBP again, 9.30 a.m., okay, and sometimes it gives you a forecast. Um, so sometimes people try to analyze, you know, what's going to happen in the market, whether this is going to be a good buy and sell. So those that trade the news, okay, they, if they think it's going to be good news, they'll put in a buy. If they think it's going to be bad news, they'll put in a sell. So we just be careful because it's, it's the banks at the end of the day. The banks are going to want to trick you. They might send you some wrong information. Mm -hmm. So they might say, oh yeah, no, it's a really strong sell, okay? But then it's a buy. So they catch all you guys out and they make money off your money, right? <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes it's a, bit more, it's a bit more safer, it's a bit more safer to wait till the news has ended, mm -hmm. unless you're really sure that's going to be something major, right? It's, it's safer to wait for the, when the news has ended. Once the news has ended, you can then have a look. If it comes back down, let's say it's a sell, and it comes back down to your support line, you think it, okay, this is a good buy again. I'm not worried. I still know long term it's going to go up. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's how you trade the news. And again, so later on, the the New York session opens, so the um, opens around 1 p.m. So uh, you can see here around 1:30, we're going to have some major news. I think on the Tuesday again, mm -hmm. uh, and then 7 p.m. a bit more maybe on the Euro news. So this is what I'd look out for. I'd look out, okay, is it going to clash anywhere? So sometimes you, you see a huge breakout, and it's just, you can't explain why that's happening. Would you, Nina, well, would you do any buy, any buy limits if you're confident it's going to go up? And the news, no news is coming out. Maybe yeah. some buy limits in case it drops down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So instead of waiting to enter a market, you can use your pending orders. Yeah. So, you know, you don't, I don't agree that you have to st sit and look at your chart every yeah. minute of every day. Okay, that's not what I'm here to do. Yeah, okay. right. I'm here yeah. to have a life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, to yeah. I like to trade in the morning, yeah. okay, because I just like to get it over and done with. Yeah. So I put my trades in the morning, uh, and I know traders who just literally <laughs> look at the chart like all day, like, oh, I have to watch this little movement. No, no, no you don't know okay. exactly. I buy the next Right? So I enter my trades. Why? Because I know that London session opens at 8 a.m., mm -hmm. okay, so from about 7 till 9, maybe 10. You know, that's my time to just put my trades. You know, if, I'm, if I can see any long-term ones, I put them in. If I can see any short scalps, I can make money straight away. If I can be lying in bed at seven in the morning, okay, eight o'clock, and I can see a flurry of things happening, I can, before I get out of bed, I can make 100, 200 quid, okay? So that's when I questioned, why am I doing my job? <laughs> why am I gonna give, like, I can wait till 5 p.m. doing a job, and I know I can just lie in bed and make money. <laughs> <laughs> you, how, do you, how do you calculate your thesis for that? So just like how with the harmonic scanner, so let me go back to the harmonic scanner. So you see here at point intervals, it's telling me the net take profit one is going to be one point one zero. Okay, the next one says one point one zero four. It's usually because it's consolidated around these certain areas or these certain points. So if I go back to my uh, charts where I've analysed it, okay. So if I now go back to uh, one hour chart. Where's my next one? 1.104. Okay, why have I placed it there? Let's have a look. So remember, before it was a downward trend. Mm -hmm. So I'm spotting where is my next support. I can see support, right? Because that most probably will be my resistant line. So I can see 1.10491. Oh, it's bounced here. So that's is support there. It's kind of hesitated around this area quite a bit, so it's acting as support. Even this long green wick has come down here. Even that long green wick has come that far down, but it didn't even, it still bounced back up. Even along here, okay, it's kind of, it was near, but not quite uh, that close. Even this section here, you can see it bounced, and then it went up before it came down. So my re next resistance will be my previous support. support. Okay? And that will act as your tick profit, you're saying? Yeah. Two. That would be my take profit too. Oh. Okay? So when you put in your stop loss numbers and your take profit numbers, you don't have to watch your chart because whenever it hits those levels, okay, it will autom the, aut the market will automatically close and you've made profit. So if you hit your stop loss, you're automatically close and you've made a small loss. So your support of this is works as stop loss and take profit support. Yes. But it's based on what the harmonic scanner is telling me. 
Okay? So instead of just looking at the harmonic scanner and just saying, yeah, I'll put that stop loss in and I'll put that take profit one in, okay? Guys, try and understand why is that your take profit one? Why is that your stop loss? Okay, why is that your entry level? Why is that take profit three? Okay, how many times does it hit take profit three? Okay, but I'm gonna give you, show you something now. So what else did we say in the beginning? Let me just make sure. So I wanna make sure we cover